All right, so let's just talk overall about problem number five on the test. Problem number five, uh, <clears throat> you know, is going to be a um, free body diagram, sum the forces problem of a rigid body. Sum the forces and sum the moments. Uh, it might be translation, x, y. It might be rotation, right, normal tangential. Uh, this one was rotation. So um, <clears throat> you draw your free body diagram, draw only the forces that are really acting on here, and draw your axes, right? Define your axes according to the acceleration. So if your acceleration is going to be in normal tangential, draw normal tangential. If your acceleration is going to be xy, draw xy. And then sum of force equals ma, sum of force equals ma, sum of force equals i alpha. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you know problem number five requires a free body diagram. But in general, problems that um, ask for forces <clears throat> at pins <clears throat> and problems... <clears throat> that ask for accelerations are are good to draw the free body diagram and some of the forces as opposed to problem number six problems that ask for velocities <clears throat> and are not really asking for forces what hey what's that force in that spring those are more um, apt to solve using conservation of energy but you know problem number five is a free body diagram but the reason is, if it's probably looking for forces, it's probably looking for accelerations uh, that the conservation of energy would not, <clears throat> that you'd not get for the conservation of energy. So, um, you know, look back at the um, problems we did in class and problems for homework uh, for translation and rotation. <clears throat> and I want you to be prepared for both of them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember which one I used last semester or which one I'm going to use this semester. Be prepared for both translation and rotation. It's really the same process, isn't it? Summing the forces equals mass times acceleration. Summing the forces equals mass times acceleration. And summing the moments equals I alpha. If you sum moments about a point G or sum moments about point O, it's just I G alpha or I O alpha. But if you sum the moments about a different point that has a different center of gravity away from that, then you have to worry about that MAD uh, <coughs> term uh, and that MAD is almost like it's a moment that MA is acting a distance D away from your point P that you are summing your moments about that you would have to almost treat it like a moment on the right hand side of your equation in addition to the I alpha. Uh, so anyway, look at those. Uh, don't memorize every problem, but understand the process for these types of problems. All right.